four of us went out to the front lines um, of Brega, which is a small city uh, where there's some intense fighting between the loyalists and the rebels. And uh, we went out there in a rebel vehicle, got out. They told us Qaddafi forces are extremely close. Um, we decided to get to the side of the road because we thought that there might be shelling directly on the road. Um, not a minute or so later, two uh, heavily armed Qaddafi vehicles came over that hill on that same road. The rebels retreated. Uh, we pressed ourselves as close as we could to the dirt uh, and firing became uh, very heavy and seemed accurate in our direction. Uh, I quickly realized, no, this isn't a crossfire. This is them firing at us directly. And uh, not long after that, I heard Anton Hamrell, the South African photographer, who was sort of in front by about 10 or 20 meters, shouting, help, help. Um, I yelled, Anton, are you okay? He responded, no. Uh, another barrage of bullets. And uh, I said, Anton, and he didn't respond after that. You know, the bullets were still coming closer. These soldiers were in fact out of their vehicles shooting at us. So um, it was kind of an instinctive, a gut feeling, you know, either you get up and maybe hold your hands up to surrender or maybe you get, you get shot down like Anton was. And so I just got, I just got up, I, I sort of, ran forward with my hands up, yelling, uh, Sahafa, um, Sahafa, journalist, journalist. Uh, uh, before they got to me, I, I saw Anton uh, lying on the ground and uh, bleeding out heavily, motionless. Something inside you tells you he was dead. The soldiers came up to me, uh, struck me, with the butt of an AK um, several times. My helmet was knocked off. I think I was punched. And then I saw them dragging Manu and Claire off the ground and, you know, striking them in a similar manner. We were all uh, thrown in the back of a pickup truck, you know, our hands behind our backs. Claire looked back at me, she had a black eye. She looked back at, back at me and uh, my, head, my head was bleeding a lot, but it was just, you know, from the scalp, from the, from, the, from the hits of the butt of the rifle. She said, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm okay. And uh, uh, just a feeling of complete shock, um, terror, um, soldiers sort of mocking you, looking in your face and saying, Qaddafi, Mia, Mia, Qaddafi, 100% you know, and uh, snapping a cell phone photo of you. <clears throat> but after that moment, uh, we were driven maybe 20, 20 minutes in the back of a, of a pickup and uh, sort of stashed in a house they occupied in this town of Brega. And uh, we were actually um, treated okay, okay. Um, my head was bandaged up a little bit. Um, they, were, they were kind of pouring water down our throats a little bit and uh, you know some food we were told you're going to Tripoli and that was scary of course but it was kind of something we knew we were going to Tripoli I mean we knew what had happened to the New York Times journalists when they were captured um, it was just uh, the complete shock of what had happened to Anton that was overriding anything else really in your mind I think they left him there. I think that these were very young soldiers and I think that they saw what they had done to him. Really committed a war crime, shooting an unarmed uh, Western journalist. And I think that uh, either they left him there and maybe someone later buried him um, because the rebels reported him as missing. So somehow his body was, was hidden. Really the treatment was, was quite decent. Um, we were fed regu regularly, um, we were, were not tortured. Um, mentally it was tough because you have to get over the fact that you were involved with the team in which one of your members died. Um, you have to get over that 
guilt or try to deal with that guilt and you can't talk about it. We all decided that we couldn't talk about it because it would have been dangerous if they knew what we actually knew, um, put ourselves in danger. Um, we were fed regularly, interrogated twice. Uh, one of the times we were interrogated in Tripoli was quite stressful, about six hours. Um, and kind of the presumption is you're a spy and you have to prove to them that you're not a spy. So you have to be very careful and detailed of what you tell them. You know, I was uh, reported for Global Post. I sent this many stories, I sent this many videos. And you have to, and then they start to ask you kind of intelligence based questions. Well, you know, where do the rebels get all their weapons? Where, you know, what, who do you know that's high profile amongst the rebels? And, you know, we were truthful about that. And, you know, maybe didn't tell them about maybe one or two people. But other than that, we were very truthful. And, of course, I was worried they had my cell phone, they had contact numbers. But um, Benghazi is fully in rebel hands, and it's it's you know it's pretty pretty strong on that side. So I, I hope that my cell phone didn't cause anybody to be captured or killed. You know, you go through different emotions when you're in captivity. You know, you say my career is over. You know, and then in their hand you say, well, my career's just started. So you go these weird, you know, extreme ideas of where. Of, where you are based on this capture. You don't want to be defined as a as that guy who got captured in 2011, you know, and I believe that frontline journalism is important, you know, without these photos and videos and first-hand experience, we can't really tell the world how bad it might be, you know. Without the reporters there, Benghazi might have been invaded and might have been a massacre, you know. The UN, and, the UN and NATO intervened. Um, so these kinds of things are very important to me. But <clears throat> at the same time, I mean, my, fa my friends and family did so much that I just want to take the time, I want to take some months to really thank them, really be with them and understand what they went through. Um, you know, they put their lives on hold and tried to initiate a media campaign for me and, and you know, I, had petitions signed all over the world. We're going down to Washington DC and New York to talk to high level diplomats. I mean, these kind of things that uh, I'm, I'm astounded by every day when I hear about it. Uh, just because uh, one of their good friends um, got captured, made a, made a bad mistake that day. So I, I have to deal with that and I have to uh, try to fully understand it, thank them. And also, I'm, I'm concerned that we need to find Anton's body. We need to confirm that, you know, and have closure for his family. Um, we need to be aware that there's 10,000 or so political prisoners in Tripoli, and they're being held basically for crimes that Gaddafi regime says is treason to uh, talk about the rebellion, to hold up a flag that's not the green Gaddafi flag to uh, send a text message that uh, is against Qaddafi. And, and they're still held there without any kind of due process of law.